Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video about this thing here. This is Threadlocker. Now it might not be something that you've bumped into if you are using things like bind and fly quadcopters, but if you are building helicopters or you are putting together models where you don't want any of the screws to come loose accidentally, Threadlocker is your friend. I thought I'd make a video to talk about how to use Threadlocker and what it is, and more importantly then how you undo it when you've done it up because I've got a friend of mine who's getting into helicopters who's starting to come across this stuff. Now you can get this from lots of different places, things like Amazon sell it. This is pretty much the standard one, Loctite 243 is the kind of thing that you're after. This will keep a screw from coming undone. Now you're only going to use Loctite if you are putting a screw, something like this little screw here, into a metal fastener. Now this is my Recon 6 that I've just updated to Walk Snail, and this little thing that's been screwed into is metal, so it's going to be metal into metal, which is a perfect place to use a little bit of thread locker so that it doesn't accidentally come loose due to vibration. However, there are other times when thread locker is a bad idea. So for example, at the top of this little screw here is a nylock nut. If you're using nylock nuts, then the nylock nut is going to lock the bolt and nut into place. So you don't need something like thread locker. So let me show you how you do this because there's a lot of um, complicated stuff about thread locker and it's really easy. A bottle like this is probably going to last you. I mean, this is one that I bought recently when I was building that OMP Hobby M4 helicopter. I wanted some fresh stuff. The previous bottle I probably had for about 15 years. So what we'll do, we'll take the top off. We'll open the valve at the top. And well, the way I do it, I just put a little dab in the middle of this tray. So that is all we're going to need. We can put that back on the shelf. That little dab is probably going to be good enough for 30 or 40 screws. We don't need a lot. Now, the way that I use it is that what I do is I get the screw with a clean paper towel. I just rub it around just to get rid of all the smuts, any grease or anything on it. Uh, some people get very emotional about this and use acetone and all kinds of things. A little bit of grease isn't going to stop it working, but it's better to get rid of kind of all that mess if you're going to be putting thread lock on it. Then all I do is I just dip the very end into the thread lock. So it's covering just the last two or three threads. And then what I do is I just run it against my finger and then wipe my finger off on the paper. And what that has done is that has filled the last three or four threads on the screw ready to go in. And actually that's kind of what it shows you on the bottle. So that you don't cover the whole thing, you don't dip it in and trying to cover it like you're trying to cover an ice cream in chocolate sauce. That is all you need. And then just screw it in, you just screw it in as normal. And that means that the thread locker with it being in between the threads is going to hold everything in place and it's not going to go everywhere else and cover everything in thread locker that you're going to have to get rid of. If you do find that it's gone somewhere else, you can just use the same paper towel to get rid of any excess. If it is going everywhere, it's probably a sign that you've used too much. Now, thread locker will go off in the absence of air, so that will take a couple of hours to be ready to go. So I wouldn't use something that was being thread locked until probably the day after. So I'd build it on one day and then test fly it on the following day just to make sure that all the thread locker had set up. Now the last question that I'm going to add and uh, talk about my flying buddy Adam is that well what happens when you want to undo stuff that's been thread locked? Well it does mean that you're going to have to apply a little bit more pressure so make sure that you're pushing into the screw before you undo it. However, if you ever come to one where somebody has absolutely covered the entire length of the screw with thread locker and it is just not moving, then because it should be a metal fastener into a metal piece, then the big tip I would give you is heat up your soldering iron and just pop it on the top and just hold the soldering iron on the fastener and just wait for it to get a little bit hot, probably count about five or six, and then try it again. If it doesn't come out, do the same thing, five or six, try it again, because heat should soften up thread lock, and that should mean then that you have a chance 
of getting it out. Now you don't need to use thread lock if you are screwing a thread into some kind of plastic and be aware that some kind of plastics don't like thread locker. However, modern nylons and things don't care. So most of the stuff that's on a quadcopter are going to be absolutely fine. But if you're using lots of 3D printed parts, use the trick that I showed you. Just cover the last three or four threads with the thread lock. And then once you've done that, wipe it off with your finger so that it's just sat in the recesses of the nut bolt and then wipe your finger off on the paper towel and pop it in. Hopefully that's useful for those of you that are new to Threadlocker. That's how you use it. You do not have to bathe the entire model in Threadlocker. All you need is that little bit, just as it shows here on the packet, and that will be enough to make sure that those nuts and bolts won't come loose due to the vibration of the model. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.